Isaiah chapter 40 and uh, from verse 28 and really concentrating on verse 31. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. God here is described as a God of great strength, the creator, the everlasting God, who has no, there's no searching of his understanding. He knows all things with all power from all time. And God gives strength. He giveth power to the faint. To them that have no might, he increaseth strength. But do we desire and seek this strength from him. There is, of course, always a danger of weariness. Maybe after Christmas time we have a bout of weariness. But when we're weary, we're prone to sin. As we try and find easy ways out of things. We're prone to complain. We're prone to neglect our, our duties. The Bible says more than once there is a danger of being weary in well-doing. We're prone to backslide away from God. Even the young, the youth, shall faint and be weary. The young man shall utterly fall. You can be weary in mind, body and soul. With a real danger there must be some help. And there is. This is the Lord's way, uh, uh, there is a Lord has a way to keep people going. The kind of energy that God gives here is as an eagle that takes off, it uh, mounts up with wings as, as eagles in the sky rather than wandering about on the earth. Uh, can, can we rise up above our troubles? There is the one like the runner these that wait upon the Lord, they shall run and not be weary rather than uh, slouching around. The Christian runs a race and fights a fight without seemingly getting weary. And a walker, <coughs> a walking can be harder than running sometimes. A walker who walks with God blamelessly to be holy without fainting. Well, physical strength won't do it. Mental strength won't do it. And even moral strength, if there's such a thing without God, won't do it. I've seen all these three types of people, the physically strong, the seemingly mentally strong, and the morally strong, all fainting and weary. You may be heroic or impressive or kind, even that won't do it. 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 3 says, And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, I presume as a kind of a sacrifice, I ha and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Some other strength is needed, and it comes from waiting upon the Lord. He giveth power to the faint, to wait, to mount up like eagles and run and not be weary and walk and not faint. God supplies strength. Psalm 103 and verse 5 speaks of God who satisfies thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Well obviously eagles get old as well, but it's thought of as being young, um, always vigorous, 
And God can do this for his people. There are old Christians who are young and vigorous. In their, certainly in their heart, if not in their body, in their spirit, spiritually vigorous. And they, are, they, they have the strength to serve the Lord, whether it's just in bed, in prayer. These are vigorous and are strong, even in weakness. There's, there can be a true liveliness of God's renewing strength among his people. And it's a greater strength than anything physically, mentally or moral. It's a spiritual strength from God's grace. So how are we all doing? We're to be waiting, which sounds easy, but the key is that we're not so much waiting for strength, but waiting on the Lord. There are two types of waiting here to come together. There's waiting expectantly in faith, expecting uh, comfort and encouragement from God, from our Father in heaven, it, waiting for his benefits, waiting for his goodness to, uh, uh, upon us, earnestly desiring the enjoyment of God's favour. And then there's waiting with not just faith but with love the second wing of the eagle if you like if you think of your eagle as having two wings one of faith and one of love the waiting obediently for our master's direction expecting guidance and instruction from God uh, uh, diligently attending to and delighting in his service and in his will this is loving God seeking to do the things that he says. So there's waiting on him then, both in expecting his kindness to us and expecting his instruction. Depending how we wait upon the Lord, our spiritual life of faith and love will go up or down. The purpose is to strengthen the things which remain, as Revelation 3 and 2 says. I wrote something yesterday, critical of some church and people jumped up at me or some of them and well there's things that are good to be encouraged and there's things to be dealt with uh, sin, evil we need strength to resist the evil and choose the, choose the good so to wait on the Lord then uh, patiently it isn't just a, a, sleep, a sleepy uh, waiting but it's a looking to God and as as we look to the Lord we are to have this um, this mounting up with wings as eagles we are to have as we wait upon the Lord we're to have faith in his promises based upon the truth the facts of the Bible there is a a type of awaiting on the Lord which is a mystical type which has got nothing really based on biblical truth there but God has made promises in the scriptures many of them they apply to the people of God and we wait upon him believing on him trusting in the blood of Jesus Christ wait in faith then and in 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 love with with love towards God as we wait upon him we love him we, we're seeking to be obedient to him and to to follow him this is waiting on the Lord this is where the strength the renewing of the strength comes from we're expecting waiting for spiritual strength we may feel that we need other sorts of strength but we primarily wait on the Lord for spiritual strength. This is the first and most essential thing. It, it involves a seeking a greater appreciation of the Lord Jesus Christ. To be a Mary rather than a Martha. 
sitting at his feet. We have a Bible. When we sit with the Bible, we sit at the feet of Jesus Christ. And, and we learn to deeply appreciate him. We can think about the things that are true about the Lord Jesus. We, 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 we should have a sense of wonder as we wait upon the Lord. There is the perfect, glorious, pure, lovely peace of eternity that's come for those who've trusted in Christ. And we enjoy, even in the present, fellowship with God, communion with God. He is with us, Emmanuel, God with us and fellowship with one another as we wait on the Lord there's a sense of wonder that God has been gracious to us a sense of appreciation a sense of wonder a sense of thankfulness it's no small thing to be saved there are multitudes today multitudes who are not saved they have no regard for the Lord Jesus Christ. They have no desire for an inheritance in heaven, incorruptible and indefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. They have no thankfulness for being adopted as children of God, that were once enemies of God, of being forgiven by God, because Christ came into the world and died for sinners. We should have a sense of thankfulness for God's presence by the Holy Spirit and for giving us assurance. I, I, I hope you all have assurance that you're in Christ, that you've trusted in him, that you fear not. And there's nothing to fear once we've trusted that the blood of Christ has been shed for our sins. We, we, we've known that our sins are so heinous that we'd be condemned to hell. That we've come, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner, and put our trust in Jesus Christ. And we're assured it's through faith alone. Therefore, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have a, should have a sense of thankfulness for belonging to God it's called union with Christ a Christian is joined is truly joined to Jesus Christ we're described as being part of the body of Christ and we're thankful for these things so wonder and amaze and appreciating such things this is how we wait upon the Lord we don't wait upon him as if he's not there. We wait upon him in faith and with a love towards him. A thankfulness that we're waiting for a day. Our friend Denzel was saying, it seems like Jesus is a long way off his return. But we don't know. We don't know. But what we do know is that one day in the twinkling of an eye, we'll be changed. And our vile, what we call our vile bodies, and our sinful bodies, bloodshed. will be changed in a twinkling of an eye. It comes as a thief in the night. And we'll be made like unto his glorious body. And we're thankful for that. That we're heirs with Jesus Christ of everything. All things are his. And we're his. If we're his, then all things are ours. We're joint heirs with Christ and from thankfulness to joy as we wait upon the Lord for the joy there's a joy set before us just as there was a joy set before him even as it says in Hebrews when he was about to be crucified he despised the shame 
for the joy that was set before him. We have, we should have, must have joy that he loved us. He still loves us. He gave himself for us. The Lord loves his people. He's preparing a place for us. We should have joy that victory is assured. The blood of Christ cleanses us from all sin. The Christian is counted righteous. He became sin for us that we should be the righteousness of God in him. These are vast subjects. We should have a joy that he promises that all our needs are supplied by and in and through Jesus Christ. We should be rejoicing always. Not just on Christmas Day. Every day. We should have joy that he hath done all things well. Whatever's come to pass. We don't understand a lot of things. But we know that Jesus has done all things well. All things are working together for good to those that love God. To those that have been called by him. We should have joy that he will never leave nor forsake us because he's promised it. And Jesus Christ, unlike us, keeps his promises. We make promises and we mean them, don't we, sometimes. And we have to be thinking, oh, I shouldn't have made that promise because it's going to be pretty. I'd like to keep it, but I maybe I'm trying to do too much. But Jesus Christ never does too much. He, he's done everything. He's fully mighty, the mighty God fully able to keep his promises he won't leave us nor forsake us it's a cause of great joy isn't it the joy of the Lord is your strength it says in Nehemiah chapter 10 and you should be now thinking on these things and waiting on the Lord and your strength already even now and these, as I'm speaking to you should be being renewed and you should be mounting up with wings. We've been talking of heavenly things. You should be now mounting up with wings as eagles and full of appreciation, wonder, thankfulness and joy. High in heaven, we have all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. If we can't think on these things, well, wait on the Lord some more. Have you experienced already today now some of this mounting up with wings as eagles from the valley of weariness? Whether it's post-Christian weariness or whatever. Post-Christmas, not Christian, post-Christmas. <laughs> now, to run. Everybody likes going for a run, don't they? Well, the duties of the Christian life are compared to running with zeal, liveliness. But it's a very fascinating expression in um, Hebrews chapter 1, which is very unusual for a, a runner, although I expect a runner does need this. And you may be thinking of what the one I'm thinking of in Hebrews chapter 12. It says this of running, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, that's the previous chapter of Hebrews, all these great heroes of faith, some of them suffered terribly of course, others uh, overcome great armies. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race which is set before us. Well it's a long run, it's a long race it's, it's short in some ways isn't it, this life but if you're running, it, you get weary and we need patience to run this race, we need to be looking unto Jesus the author and finisher of our faith, who as we said before for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the 
throne of God. So we need some other strength here. Then if we're going to run and not be weary, we're going to need uh, patience. So special strength is needed again. It's more than just what we want for our immediate personal needs, for our immediate kind of sense of our own well-being. You see, there's much more in here to renewing our strength. These, this verse is a well-known verse, isn't it? It's a very popular verse. But, and it's, it's a, always a comfort, this chapter of, of Isaiah. And this strength, then, we need a strength to love the Lord Jesus Christ above all else. That's our race that's set before us. To seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And most have their excuses one way or another, that make light of it, one to his farm, another to his merchandise, and worse. Some took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. Right, we're not hopefully in that category, but we still need strength to be really seeking the Lord as we should in this race set our eyes set upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Many walked in John 6 and said, This is a hard saying, who can hear it? And many of his disciples walked back. Like Lot's wife. Do you remember Lot's wife? Jesus said, Remember Lot's wife? He was a righteous man. Uh, is it uh, Peter? Is it? He says that he was vexed yeah. by the filthy conversation of the wicked. He was means he was troubled and per perplexed in some ways, bothered by the ways of the people behaving around him, like we might be today. But his wife longed to look back to the place. I don't suppose that she was really longing to be back among the, the drunkards and the gay lifestyle of Sodom. But she at least liked the gaudy atmosphere and the frivolity. And she loved the company of the people. Maybe the smell of humanity, depraved as it was. Felt sorry for them. And of course Jesus loved these same sort of people as well. But unlike Lot's wife, he didn't revel in their company. He, he died to save their sort from their sins. He came to preach the gospel to them and to save them. He died to save our sort from our sins also. And to save all sorts from all sorts of sins. Oh, that we may not be like Lot's wife who looked back from behind and became a pillar of salt. Christian is meant to be a pillar and he's meant to be salt but he's not meant to be a pillar of salt we're the salt and the light of the world we're to be this is the light of, of the truth of Jesus Christ we, we're to speak the truth concerning God man as being a lost sinner in the hands of God we're to speak of Jesus Christ the saviour of salvation by grace through faith alone in the blood of Christ alone this is the race that we have to run we can't be looking back from whence cometh my help says the psalmist psalmist 121 I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help my help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth he will not suffer thy foot to be moved if you're running a race your foot's got to be steady he that keepeth thee will not slumber see here it's literally God himself who's keeping the Christian Jesus said the same of himself as the good shepherd who would not lose any of the sheep but would keep them. Psalm 100, 
21 continues in verse 4. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The Lord shall not smite thee by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even for evermore. Here then, the Lord gives strength to his people as we wait upon him to mount up as eagles and to run and not be weary. Strength indeed. But also strength to walk with the Lord. We're supposed to, we aren't meant to run before we can walk. But here, walking comes last. It's not whether it's greater or lesser. In some ways it's, it's greater. When you can't mount up like an eagle, when you can't run, you've got, you, can, you can perhaps you can still walk. And it's a long walk, a continual walk. We're told to walk with our feet shod with the gospel of peace in Ephesians 6. How beautiful are the feet of him that bringeth good news. We're to walk with the Lord in all his ways, like Enoch, who was, has the honour in the Old Testament of being translated directly to heaven on the basis that he walked with God. He, he would obey God, walking closely with him. Some people are, are, are flyers, aren't they, and runners. But this quiet walking with God is highly esteemed here, and it needs strength. Renewed strength is needed for the daily, slow, steady walk with God. I'd say there's probably more to be achieved. I've given you the illustration before. It's, it's more... For an elderly person to go through old age than it is for a youth to run up Everest. It needs much more strength. And it needs the Lord's strength. There's nothing as lovely as the elderly waiting upon the Lord daily and continually. Because you can say, well, I've got, I haven't got the strength of a youth. I've got nothing else. But I've got the Lord. He's my strength. We're to walk with God through Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. Other, oh, there's lots, uh, just a few more verses on this walking. We're to walk by faith. We're to walk after the Spirit, not after the flesh. We're to walk worthy of the Lord. Another expression. We're to walk circumspectly. Circumspectly. So that means carefully because the days are evil so a gentle right through the right way with the Lord and that verse we read in 1st John chapter 2 is, is a very uh, 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 lovely but challenging scripture 1st John chapter 2 and verse 6 it says He that saith he abideth in him, that is in, in Christ, in, in God, ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. This word walking is something physically walking, is it? It's our whole way of going about. We are to walk as Christ walked. So that's harder than taking up like an eagle, that's harder than, than running. This to walk as Christ walks this must be the most challenging part of all this well we need strength from God we need to wait upon the Lord to look upon the Lord we may not uh, mount up we may not feel it if we mount up with uh, wings as eagles we may not feel that we run but we must walk as Jesus walked Now, we ask again, who can have such strength? We live by faith. As we said before, these, these 
precious promises are held onto by faith and it appears this is a very thin this is something very small now this, this is perhaps a challenge to you here that, that, that we, we, do, we are to live by faith and if we can despise faith in the eyes of the world look at the strength of the youths look at the power of, of this uh, preacher or of that um, uh, such and such a book I've read it's so impressive but the Christian is to live by faith in Christ we're not impressed with outward things of success and the like. The success is the victory of Christ and the challenge is to live, to walk by faith in the Son of God. This in, almost invisible thing. And it, it's because that it is by faith that the scripture says that, that it is it's because it's by grace that it's to be all to the glory of God that we live by faith in Jesus Christ alone. If we're not depending upon our works or our boasting or anything like that, it is all looking to Jesus Christ. Be not surprised that your faith may seem very weak. It may seem very, very, very small but don't despise it because the faith of a Christian is faith that is in Jesus Christ and it's him that we're trusting this almost invisible line of faith does join the believer to Jesus Christ and to heaven and all these promises and all this strength Faith is, is given the work of the Holy Spirit. Now I'm not going to go off on, on this uh, into length here. The Lord Jesus Christ promised the Spirit of God. And you don't see the Spirit. We don't see Jesus Christ. We don't see the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. But we, we, as, we, as we've been given faith in this power of God, that the blood of Christ has absolutely saved his people and that there is their full eternal life has been given. It's not just forgiveness. We, uh, as we said, we have all these other blessings. We talked about adoption, being a, in a, an inheritance. But we're joined to God. We're made alive unto God. We're, we become, as it were, indestructible. We don't, we don't fear man any longer. We fear God. We're not afraid of what man can do to the body because he can't destroy the soul. And so there's this, there's this same power that brought again our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead that is working in a person who trusts in Jesus Christ. That is one thing not to doubt. Do not doubt the power of God that has given you faith in Jesus Christ. Do not doubt that this is the work of the Holy Spirit that he shows up our sin well, we can, we can, uh, 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 unless we're the most proud person we can say yes God has shone a light and, I've, and I, 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 I'm, a, I'm simply a sinner but then, he's, then the light shone brighter as it were there's the saviour the Lord Jesus Christ this is the work of the Holy Spirit don't despise it this is the most precious work God does, causing people to wait upon him. And that is, I'm, I'm, for example, I'm going around in circles, it's a, what philosophers don't like. You say, well, this is the reason for it, and it causes this. And then you say, well, that's the reason, and this causes this. And they say, it's circular, circular reasoning, they call it. Well, they can call it that if they want to, but it's true. The strength of God from the Lord, and at the same time, this waiting, this this feeling of emptiness and yet there's with it a feeling of fullness as we're looking to Jesus Christ and we're believing 
that the Holy Spirit of God is working in and for each of us, his people, who have nothing but Jesus Christ. And it's conferred to us by this. I see, I see the faith. You can't, where can you find your Where can you see your faith? If you say, well, it's in my life. It, I, it's taking fruit. It's bearing fruit. And you say, well, I can't boast about what I'm doing. But if you've trusted in Jesus Christ, God is working in you. The Apostle Paul could say this of the Philippians, the, the work that God has begun, he will complete. This is the biblical renewing here, renewing our strength. It's, it, isn't, it doesn't come by this uh, uh, so-called approach. So you go to some church and there's some superman at the front and he puts his hands on you and he anoints you and you're, you're suddenly you're... Well, it, despite that happening, you may actually be trusting in Christ. If you're not trusting in the man, you, you, these things may happen. It's a shame that it has to, people have to resort to that when they have to wait upon the Lord, not upon men. If you're tired, I'm sure some of us are a bit tired, here is the, the great secret to wait upon the Lord. Look into him in faith and with love and he will renew your strength. If we've got any excuses for a poor Christian life, we can put it right. We've got no excuses for not repenting. We need to seek the Lord, wait upon the Lord and we wait. We, we, we can't have some churches, they've got a plan for next year. What's going to happen? How many more churches are going to plant? We'll wait upon the Lord. Wait for him to renew our strength and see what the Lord will do. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, Lord, there is this great tendency to weariness and sleepiness and tiredness. And Lord, some of that is very natural. But we thank thee, Lord, for these promises in the scripture that even as we get older, we haven't reached the end. Even the youths faint and become weary. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and mount up with wings as eagles. And Lord, we long for the day to mount right up into the glory that's to come. And Lord, we pray in the meantime that as we wait upon Thee, Thou would renew our strength to run with patience the race that's set before us and to walk holily before Thee, seeking to love Thee as we should. Have mercy upon us, forgive us all our sins, thank thee that the Holy Spirit will convict us of sin you are left right and centre all through us Lord we see no good thing but we see Jesus with the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame is now set down at the right hand of God Lord have mercy upon this congregation other friends in other churches around the land and around the world, Lord, we pray that thy people may be those that wait upon thee, that thou would renew our strength, that we may live a life of faith and love to the glory of God and the Lord Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's sing a little bit more from our... Our song, 40 again. <laughs>